This week in Nerf, we've got leaks, release dates, and more info on all the new blasters coming out this year and next year. I'm Jangle, and this is our source for first party, third party, and community Nerf news. It has been an interesting day so far. I'm actually, well, a little behind schedule because this, uh, this came in. And this is the first thing we're going to talk about today. This is the Dominator, or Conqueror as some people are calling it, though I believe... Uh, based on the way the language works, the translation works either way. I personally am going with the Dominator. It is a worker blaster, a three-stage flywheel cage uh, acceptable blaster shell, which is kind of crazy because we've seen blasters like the Aurora uh, and Fenestrator from Blaster Forge that are awesome, and now this is another shell that can accept those three-stage systems. There are some caveats to that though. Uh, unfortunately, you do need to have certain cages unless you want to modify the shell a bit. I got this in and I popped it open and I wanted to confirm some things that have been said to me. Certain cages don't fit natively. A lot of cages actually don't fit. Uh, there are some ribs in the way that you have to remove and get rid of, but uh, I'll go more into a lot of those details when I get my actual video out on it, but regardless, know that there are a little, a uh, uh, few things here and there in terms of details you have to be aware of, but one of the big things that people are very interested about for this blaster is not just that it's a three-stage system, which is cool and that you can run in a three-stage, uh, a two-stage, three or a one-stage, whatever you want, but also that it has a proprietary new mag, and this is a 40 dart double stacked magazine so it's a staggered entry point for the darts so they go you know every other and you can fit more in a smaller amount of space and have something that we've wanted for a long long time in the community which is a double stack magazine we've always thought it wouldn't work because the darts would squish but based on the video footage that's been shared it is possible at least in some way i was trying to get this blaster put together in, in some way before filming today, uh, but there was just no way it was gonna happen. So I haven't been able to test it yet to find out if it really does work, but I'm very excited. And even if it doesn't work, the shell actually comes with some adapters so you can use regular size magazines as well. So if you don't wanna try these out or if they don't work, we can still use regular magazines in this blaster, which is absolutely awesome. Um, because of that, staggered double stack magazine setup, they've actually recommended and created a couple new flywheel cages that have a wider aperture entryway for darts to go into the flywheel cage so that the darts may not be quite, quite as centered as you would see them in a regular single stack mag. So this allows them to slide into the flywheel cage more easily. Now, I would assume this would only be an issue for the first stage, so I'm just going to use their file cage for the first stage, and anything else should be centered enough to use whatever cage you want to put in there. Now, you're not going to be able to fit anything with a dart guide, uh, like a lot of the OFP cages and things like that, so that may limit some things, or may introduce some more design choices and changes that we'll see in a lot of uh, aftermarket cages or different offerings and things like that. Regardless, there's a whole lot to go on with this blaster. They also have a full auto kit, a uh, standard semi-auto pusher like you'd see in the Swordfish, and a, a flywheel speed controller that you can actually put in as well for the full auto kit if you choose to use that. So there's definitely some interesting things with this and I'm looking forward to bringing a video to you with all of that, but they are available now. Uh, you can get them from places like NF Strike and the like right now, but I believe they will be coming to over or, uh, to uh, North American vendors and uh, other uh, Australian, European, all those vendors in the near future, I would assume. So keep your eye out for that. Let me know your thoughts on this one because this is a big one and I want, I want to spend a lot of time on this, but I can't today because there's quite a lot to talk about. So let's move on to Toys R Us because you know I love talking about Toys R Us because the story just never ends. 
So this was shared to me, uh, Buff Daddy Nerf actually linked me this. So an article that was discussing the fact that the Kroger chain of grocery stores and several other chains will be having something called Jeffrey's Toy Box in their store locations during the holiday season. Now Jeffrey's Toy Box, if you don't know, Jeffrey is the giraffe, the Toys R Us mascot. So this is a Toys R Us branded holiday store within grocery stores for this holiday season. Now, the companies that bought up the rights or are bringing back the rights, I believe they're looking for ways to use the branding and the name and all of that. And this is one of the ways they're going to do so. Now, if you've been in a large mall during a holiday season, you've probably seen some of the Toys R Us pop-up locations where they have just, you know, random holiday toys and things like that. I assume this is going to be similar to that, but with an even more limited selection of toys. I believe it's going to be uh, 35 toys max, they said. So it's not a whole lot. That's, uh, it's a bit disappointing. I, I, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about this one. It's Toys R Us. It's them trying to resurrect the brand and the name and all of that. Uh, I don't know if it's going to lead to anything else. If it's going to lead to more stores in the future or if we're going to see kind of seasonal things pop up for Toys R Us. It's, it's going to be interesting, I think is the only way I can look at this one currently. I, I don't have a whole lot more information than, than the article that was linked to me, which I'll of course link to you down below. So let me know, uh, it's possible by the time you see this, more information has come up from this. So who knows? I'm sure we'll be covering Toys R Us more at some point in the future because, well, that's, Toys R Us just doesn't die. It, it refuses. So kudos to them, I guess. Uh, but let's go ahead and move on to the new Overwatch blasters. BlizzCon is happening right now as this video is being released. The weekend is for Blizzard games and products and such. And so Overwatch being a Blizzard game is one of the spotlights there. And they have all of the new Overwatch blasters at BlizzCon uh, for people to get their hands on, to use, to try. And there's already video popping up of people using the Reaper shotguns. The Reaper shotguns have a back prime bar instead of a pump grip, which is definitely a bummer. Uh, but they all do look cool. The new McCree blaster is up. It is in people's hands. People have been using it. That blaster is going to prime with a slide prime on the top of the barrel, which is a little bit odd and it's only going to be a single shot blaster which is definitely a bummer i mean mccree revolver you kind of hope for those six shots but that's not what we get unfortunately that's just the way it is that's how it's gonna be for these uh but it is going to be 40 dollars for the mccree blaster 40 dollars for the diva blaster i believe it was uh last time we talked about it and the reaper set is going to be 120 dollars on gamestop so that, I believe, I would need to double check it, but I believe the Reaper set comes with more than just the one blaster. I think it actually comes with two blasters and a mask uh, because Reaper dual wielding, it's a nice touch. I like it, though it does kind of make it a bit more exclusive because it's not going to be as accessible for people at that price point. So I'm sure that was all in their plan and what they wanted. Regardless, these are cool looking shells and I will be picking some of them up because uh, they just look too cool to not. I've wanted a Diva Pistol since Overwatch came out, so I'll definitely be picking that one up. But I don't want to leave out that the micro shots for the Overwatch line are available for pre-order as well on GameStop.com. And you have Diva, you have uh, Torbjorn, and you have... Uh, shoot, I forgot the third one. My apologies. It's been a day, uh, but I will have the image up hopefully. And so you can see those and the link down below so you can check those all out. Um, but these will be available in January of 2019. So you can get your hands on those then and we'll start seeing people have them. Now there was a link actually, or an image posted in uh, Nerf Modder's Welcome that said something about about them coming out or the Reaper Blaster coming out November 3rd, which is the day this video drops. I don't know that that's the case. I, I think what it was was probably a promotion saying there's more information coming out on the 3rd, which would make sense because BlizzCon, November 3rd, all of that stuff. 
So I think that's probably that what it's going to be or pre-orders happen then. But maybe when this goes up tomorrow, we'll have more information and something happened in China where they're already selling them. But who knows? Regardless, can't spend more time on this because we got more to talk about. Uh, one more thing, and this is going to be a quick roundup of a few other things. Things being blasters that we don't have yet that are coming out soon. Uh, the rival Hypnos popped up in, in, in an image with a release date of December 2019 and uh, does showcase some more clear, pristine images of it, which is definitely nice. Uh, I don't have an exact price US for it because it is not in US dollars. We don't know what the exact uh, ratio will be. We also have our first image of the Elite Ruckus, which is an inline clip blaster that has a curved clip because Hasbro just has to change it up a little bit for every single version so you can't use the ones you already have and it's interesting it's unique looking I'll give it that so it's definitely something that's that's going to appeal to plenty of people I think that want something different unique and very much uh, their own so I think this will be one for people that will enjoy that kind of thing and you know what that's awesome so that'll spice things up a little bit. I believe that one is coming out in December as well, if I recall correctly. And then uh, some new micro shots. The new micro shots are available on Target, uh, their web store online. They list the listings for those that went up for the Series 2, which is the Rough Cut, the Strife, and the Crossfire Bow, I believe. So those all are up there. And... Uh, which is kind of cool because I'm looking forward to the micro shot line. So we've got those micro shots. We've got the Overwatch micro shots coming out. We've got the um, Star Wars micro shots coming out. So there's a lot of cool little collectible stuff coming out that I'm definitely excited for and uh, looking forward to as we go forward in the future. But because there was so much to talk about today, I know I went through it quickly. I know uh, I'm a little bit scatterbrained at the moment. My apologies. It's been uh, as I eat some of my hair that yeah, it's been a, it's been a day. So my apologies. Thank you for sticking with me through this, but let's go ahead and get into our mod of the week. This week, it comes to us from Tob Gelbert, and this is the UMHP. This is a take on the MHP 15 by Mr. Heath Pants. And this is a brushless solenoid pusher blaster that is absolutely awesome. They've changed some things up in it to make it their own. And uh, it utilizes a two-stage rev trigger, it seems. So there's like a trigger on the trigger that when you pull, that starts the rev, and then you pull the trigger itself, and that starts the solenoid pusher, which I love because I'm... You know I'm not the biggest fan of single push or single trigger setups. So being able to control that rev, at least minimally, with a half pull is definitely nice. So I really, really like this take. I don't know exactly, actually, if that change was Tobbs or if that was part of the Mark II version changes that Mr. Heath Pants is making. So I don't know who to give credit for for that one, but there's a video down below and a link down below to the Facebook post for this blaster. Go check that one out. Uh, definitely some really cool stuff. Tob, by the way, is the person who made the Katabu, Katobus and the Kibana mags. So he's definitely done some cool stuff. So go check all of that out. Last thing to talk about, as always, is the video of the week. And I know I said a few weeks ago that we'd probably see a lot of Ragnar Oktoberfest footage, but a lot of that still hasn't come out. And so this week we're going back to Endor. Because this week, Naptown Nerf and Dart Dragon's collaboration video of the third mission came out, and I love this video. Oh my goodness. It's so good. All of their, I've enjoyed all of their collaboration videos. This one is, it feels like a step even better. Uh, just the time taken and the care put into this video. I really, really enjoyed this and I cannot recommend it highly enough. I know I've recommended their collab videos in the past before and if they continue to be this caliber, I probably will again in the future. So definitely, definitely go check this out. It's the third mission of End War. It's a really cool perspective to see what all is going on and how things played out. And uh, I just, I can't, I can't recommend it enough. So go, go watch it. It'll be linked right over here in just a minute because we are at the end of the episode. So 
As always, thank you to everyone, to the people who watch, subscribe, like, comment, every, any way you choose to interact with this video, with this channel. Thank you so much for being a part of it. And if you're new to the channel and you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit the subscribe button for in the future. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jangular, and I'll see you next time.